Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Guitar Talk. I'm Mike Higgins and I'll be your host today. Uh, we like to focus on unusual instruments, different styles of music. It uh, doesn't have to have six strings either. Today we've got somebody special uh, that has four strings on his instrument and we're going to tell you a lot about him in just a moment. Uh, if you've got a, an unusual instrument or a vintage collection, you'd like to share some uh, photographs or come on and talk about them, uh, please reach out to me because we, we'd love to have you. Uh, that's what we're all about here, getting kids exposed to uh, musical instruments and live music and performance is what we're all about. Uh, today we have a very, very cool guest that I'm delighted to bring you. Uh, he has played all over the world on several occasions. Uh, he's played bass for Susan Tedeschi. Amy Mann, he's played Madison Square Garden, the United Center in Chicago. Uh, he's currently a touring member of the Duke Robillard Band. Um, he toured with the police on their synchronicity tour when he was with the band Ministry. Uh, he's accomplished a lot. He's on a list of recordings that's far too long to even talk about. It, it's really quite a resume we have here and uh, you don't get to do that unless you're really good and you have good musicianship and you're a good person to work with and he fits all of that so today uh, we have Brad Helene. Brad welcome aboard. Thanks a lot Mike. Th thanks, thanks for having for me. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. So um, <clears throat> you've toured the world several times. I have. Many countries. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. How do you find um, the response to American style music uh, when you go to some of these countries? Good. Good, yeah. good, good. You know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, Europe in particular that has a, you know, a real history of, you know, a lot of the blues and jazz guys went over there in the 40s, 50s, and 60s because they relocated over there because the right. audiences are so appreciative and, uh, you know, it's an older part of the world. America's relatively new compared to Europe, so they really appreciate, you know, art. Outstanding. In a big way, you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. I love playing. I love playing overseas. What were um, some of your early influences on the bass guitar? Well, you know, seeing the Beatles on Ed Sullivan certainly just totally turned my world upside down. You know, and uh, Paul's a good bass player. His work with them was really good. <laughs> he's good. He's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> he's great. No he's doubt. A great. He's a great musician. I mean, you know. There's no words to describe Paul McCartney. I mean, it's just, you know, Paul McCartney has set the standard for so many things, and he, he's one of the people that, you know, revolutionized the instrument. You're the you know? third bass player that I've had, and all of you have been just exceptional musicians, and every one of you has listed him as an influence. I've well, had... Um, Bobby Worthington and Steve Bigelow, two great bass players. Yeah, yeah. And that was the first name both of them shot out. Yeah. Paul McCartney. So he's reached a lot of people. Well, I think, you know, I'm going to be 60 years old this year and being, you know. Me too. You know, a, you know, a white kid, you know, growing up in the Midwest is where I grew up and what was on the radio. I mean, I loved all the Motown stuff. I mean, all the stuff that influenced Paul and those guys, you know, I, I sure. love too. I love that stuff, and I loved James it when Jameson, I was in high school. The Motown well, bass player. Well, yeah, he's the king. He's in a class he's, all by he's himself. He's the man. He's the man. How about jazz guys? When that music first caught your ear, who was? Um, I mean, there's so many absolutely mind blowing jazz bass players. Uh, I know one that caught my ear as a kid was Roy Brown. Ray, Ray Brown. Ray Brown. Yeah, yeah, I'm Ray sorry. Brown. Ray yeah, Brown. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Certainly, he's. One of the has the one of the highest profiles. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I always think of like when I think of jazz guys, which is what I'm really my main focus these days. Is that is uh, I think of Jimmy Blanton, who mm -hmm. was the guy, the kid that Duke Ellington found, and he kind of started the whole thing of developing a voice as a soloist on that instrument. Before oh, that, wow. you know, everybody was kind of playing roots and fifths, and he actually developed phrasing like the like a horn player would play, uh, and so then from there. Uh, I think the next guy in the lineage after Jimmy was Oscar Pettiford and, and then Ray Brown. I'd have to say Oscar Pettiford's probably like right up there with one of my favorites. Uh, yeah. but, but there's so many, like you said. I love Paul Chambers. I love 
Sam Jones. I mean, if I had to pick one guy out of all of them, maybe Paul Chambers, I would say, is my, my favorite right now. I think it was the mid and later 70s when I really started listening heavily to jazz bass players because that's when I discovered that fusion music that became so huge in the 70s. Right. And there was the um, guy named Dave Holland who played with um, Jack DeJeanette and John Abercrombie. They had a trio called Gateway. Nice. And I remember listening to that guy going, wow, he, he, he was like painting these landscapes well, with his bass and... And he was in Miles' band, you know, one of Miles' electric bands in the I 70s. I didn't know that at the time. Yeah, yeah. That's playing, when I found that out later, bass, yeah. But uh, uh, he's, he's the, a consummate, I mean, he's still as strong as ever. I, I went to, uh, you know, one of the great things about living in Boston is if you look, look in, on Berkeley's and, uh, New, and New England Conservatory's websites, they have all sorts of free things that you can attend. And so one day I just happened to be looking through it and I saw Dave Holland had a master class and he was teaching three freshman ensembles working with bass players and drummers and I went there and there was like 10 people there it was wow. really, it was a shame but I sat there I sat right next to Dave and I listened to him talk to these kids who were all monsters by the way these kids were like yeah. 17 and they were already playing their tails off but he he yeah he's I saw him I did a festival with Duke up in Canada last year and his quintet was on the festival and we went to see him and he was just unbelievable I mean he's He's so did amazing. you start with rock and blues and gravitate to jazz, or did you go to jazz early in the, early in the journey? My first, I learned on acoustic bass uh, in an orchestra ah. when I was a kid. I played in the, in, in the orchestra when I was in grade school and junior high. And then I abandoned that um, for other things that young boys abandon anything for. Of course girls, stuff like that, you know what I mean? And I just kind of stopped playing, and then I got back and I picked up electric bass, and uh, yeah, and really was into R&B and, and rock and blues. And, right. You know, I never went to college. I went on the road two weeks after I graduated high school in 1975, and I've been making a living playing music ever since. So. God bless you, that's uh, fantastic. It's really uh, very, I feel very blessed, you know, that I've been able to play with so many great musicians, and it just continues, you know, so. Uh, it's as you know, Mike. It's, it's funny it's, you say that. I my I had a, a, a similar journey in the in the sense that when I uh, I was supposed to show up for my college exam, I got an opportunity to do a demo at Intermedia Studios. I don't think they're there anymore. They might be. They were in Boston. Yeah, sure, I remember it. And uh, you know, at the time, Aerosmith and the Cars were up and coming, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. were all recording there. Yeah, yeah. And I went recording session in Aerosmith Studio college exam guess where I went <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I took the studio gig much to my mother's horror yeah. and uh, I started playing same as you yeah, I never yeah. never looked back yeah 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 it's, you know out I of think, the journey I think when you get bitten you know you you just got to follow it and yeah I was the same thing for me my, I'm the oldest of three kids and same much here. to my parents dismay I didn't go to school and but you know they now they see it you know 45 years later and they're like You've done well, son. You, you've yeah. hung with it. You stuck with it. You yeah, know what same I mean? That's here. the thing. My mother was an educator. So, you know, I mean, anytime, and, and that's what, you know, music is a commitment. It's, it's a lifelong pursuit. And, you, you know, you just, if you're fortunate enough to Absolutely. have to do something you love. Now, how long have you been with the Duke Robillard Band? Jeez, I, it's hard to believe, Mike, but I think it's, I think I'm in my eighth year now. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that guy, I discovered him when he first left Roomful, the very first version of the Pleasure Kings, when he had um, On Right and De Quattro was his rhythm section. And I saw him open for B.B. King. It was one of, the first, one of their first gigs. And I was just dumbfounded at how good he was yeah. and how tight they played as a trio. So I've been a fan of him and um, all the various lineups since day one. And I got to take a few lessons with Duke when nice. he lived uh, by the Columbus Cinema in Providence back in the 80s. Nice. Um, but the thing that always amazes me about the band is, I mean, you guys can just morph so fluidly from just stone cold jazz to, you know, really traditional blues music or a swing tune. So the, the menu, the palette is wide, you know? I mean, did you know that going in? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, I know. By the way, I know you and Duke have been friends for a long time, and I think that's awesome. I mean, he's 
He's a great guy, and uh, you know, Duke's one of those type of guys. I've worked for a lot of people, and uh, I'm saying this truthfully that he, he's probably the best person I've ever worked for as far as like just being a good human being, yeah. being fair with the money, like, you know, honest. Um, and he also is an incredible teacher in, in, in a very roundabout way. Like he doesn't say, unless he gets really upset about something, which is rare, but he doesn't say like, you have to go learn this. What he does, and this is one of the things I love about traveling with him is like, if I'm sitting up front driving and he's in the passenger seat, he, he's an encyclopedia of music and he will play tons of music. And it's like, you know, you better pay attention because we might be playing that tune or, you know, <laughs> stylistically, he's looking for that yes. out of his guys. You know what I mean? God, so, yeah. you know, so it's, it's, um, I, I take it upon myself to like make mental notes, go out, buy the records that he's playing and, and learn those styles. I mean, I, I love all that stuff anyway. I right. mean, I love blues. Yes. I love traditional blues. I mean, I love American music and Duke is an encyclopedia of American music. I mean, he is like, unbelievable i mean he's he's one of those guys like you and me that sat around and read liner notes his whole life and knows yeah knows who played on what and what label this is and you know and all that stuff you know he's, i mean you guys are so tight uh so it's duke yourself bruce bears yep on and, and piano the, and mark texera, and mark texera. Yeah. i know uh the couple of times that uh I was fortunate enough to come up and sit in yeah, with you guys at the, great, at the man. Thursday Night Blues series we have at the Sandbar here in Taunton, folks. You get to see guys like this there. Um, yeah, please come down. I think we're there on the 20th. All I had 20th. to do was say what key and start playing, and it was like you guys had been my band for 15 years or something. It was like so tight and locked in. Oh, thank you. You can tell yeah. that everybody's seasoned and really been playing together for a long time, you know? It's always the, you know, uh, the... The, a benefit and, uh, you know, the perk of playing with an ensemble for so long. Yes. I mean, we've, you know, besides uh, doing all the gigs, we've done tons of recording together. Tons. I mean, I think I've been on like six or seven Duke releases under his name as a leader and then dozens of records that he's produced. Yeah. That's, that's one of the perks of being in his band. He, a lot of people call him to produce their recordings. And, uh, and he usually hires us to play on them, so. That's fantastic. But Mark is an absolute killer drummer. Yeah. I mean, he's really good. He's very versed in a bunch of different styles. And he's not just a drummer, he's a musician. He really listens, he understands the concept of uh, ensemble playing to a very high level. And, and uh, he has tone. He's not just banging the kid, absolutely. beating it into submission. No, no, this no, guy no. has a tone in his playing in his hands. That's, that's, that's where it all is. It's all here. That's you know absolute. that. We can talk about our gear all we want to talk about, and it's good to have good tools. I believe in having good tools, and I have spent a lot of money on good tools, but <laughs> the music is, is in us, you know what I mean? And that's, that's right. That's where it comes from. What, so. uh, tell me a little bit about your bass. Uh, can we get a little picture of the bass over there? It's, um, that bass is a French bass. Uh, the maker is Jacquet, um, was the maker. It was built in 1860. And uh, I've had it completely restored by an incredible luthier. We're very fortunate in uh, Boston, the Boston area to have a luthier named Jed Kriegel, who works on everybody's instruments out of New York and even mm. the Midwest. And, but he completely restored that bass. That bass is completely original. The, the gears, the scroll, the back, the, the tailpiece ribs. too? Uh, not the tailpiece, no. The, the, some of it, the top is actually a new top because there was an accident with it, but it's better for it mm. the way it is. But it, it's a really an amazing instrument, and I feel very blessed yeah. to have it. You know, sounds great. You know, I always laugh when guitar players complain if they have to spend a couple of thousand dollars on a nice new guitar. And I always tell them, well, be thankful you don't play bass. Yeah, or, exactly. You know, cello or violin because, you know, you the price You've got to have a good insurance policy to have an instrument like that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and you use gut strings? I do. Yeah. You do, yeah, yeah. Very I'm, smooth, soft sound, the tone's yeah, nice more, with those. More yeah, more organic and earthy, you know what I mean? Absolutely. To me, it's, it's all about the earth, you know Absolutely. what I mean? And that sound. This bass is set up with, uh, I use, I have two wrapped, th I'm sorry, three wrapped guts on the A, D, and G, and then a, a metal E string 
But on my plywood base, which is an, an old American standard, which is also a great base, uh, they made toilets and bases out of <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio, <laughs> believe it or not. But uh, it, that has all guts, pure pure guts on, on that. And I use that for more blues gigs. And this is kind of like my jazz base. And, you know. Now, you've got another project, a jazz base project you're doing during the week. I uh, do, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's a group called uh, the Evenfall Quartet. Uh, we have a residency every Tuesday uh, in uh, Hyde Park, Massachusetts um, at, at the uh, Fairmont Grill, 81 Fairmont Ave, between 7 and 10. The band is Mark Early on tenor saxophone, who's in Room Full of Blues, great tenor player. Yep. Uh, Joe Sonny Barbado, who is an absolute killer piano player, also plays accordion. He's played with Robbie Coltrane, uh, Stanley Turrentine, a bunch of people. Yeah. I mean, he's a first call guy in Boston, just absolutely phenomenal. And the drummer is uh, Jersey Glod, who's also a first call jazz drummer. So I, I hope that people will come up and see us. Mm. Uh, no cover, great restaurant, great food, and uh, 7 to 10 every Tuesday night. How can yeah. you beat that, folks? No cover charge, a place like that with musicians like this. Yeah, Outstanding. Yeah, yeah thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah so you, you're pretty busy all the time. You've got plenty of gigs, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm, a good I'm thing. Fortunate, That's fortunate. a good thing. Yeah, fortunate. Now, you guys just came back from, was it, the Duke Robillard band just came back from, was it Spain not too long ago? We, yeah, it was before the holidays, actually. Before it was, the yeah, holidays. Yeah, it was, yeah, we were over there for three weeks in Europe and then a couple weeks in Canada. And we're, uh, we played the Bull Run last night, actually, out in Shirley. Oh, yeah, great which, place. Which was nice. And, uh, and actually, Ronnie showed up. Ronnie Earl showed up last night and sat in with us on a couple tunes. It was, it was good to see Ronnie. Yeah. Um, you know, he, his bass player, who was a very good friend of mine and a very well-respected man in the community, recently passed away, Jim Meridian. Rest in peace, Jim, and, yes. Yeah, great, great man. And he was, will be very much missed. Absolutely. But uh, it was great to see Ronnie. He played great. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, we're doing some gigs around and, uh, you know, just... Do you do any teaching? Right now, I'm, I'm actually not. I mean, I would accept students if yeah. people contacted me, but it's kind of, I did teach a lot over the years, but it's hard to keep students when you're on the road it so is. much, you know what I mean? But um, it is. I have taught a lot over the years. And, and yeah, I, likewise. I used, at one point, I had 30 plus students a week when I used to do, focus on that a lot. Mm. Now, you know, I have three or four that they're people that have been with me for a long time that nice. I enjoy teaching, and I don't go out of my way to to bring in new students because yeah. I'm just gigging all the time, like yeah. yourself, and it's yeah, hard yeah. to commit to that schedule. Sure, 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 you know, sure. It really is. Yeah. Who are some of the um, more blues-oriented bass players that might have influenced you uh, in the early years? Well, you know, I like for acoustic guys, there's the... I call them the Holy Trinity, you know, Willie Dixon, Oof. Ransom Nolan, and um, Big Crawford. To me, those are like the three, you know, acoustic guys. There's a lot of them, but there those are. those are the three kind of like Chicago guys. And then for electric bass players, I love Jack Myers, who's just a wacky. He was Buddy Guy's bass player in the 60s, played on all the uh chess recordings and some of the vanguard stuff like a record called the a man in the blues oh. but i also like this guy um that not a lot of people know he was oliver sane's bass player and he played on the little milton bobbin sessions raise a little sand like so uh my mind is troubled and i'm trying all that stuff his name was willie dotson and and uh, i i transcribed a lot of his lines and i yeah. really love his plays he was a st louis guy Played on uh, when Albert King uh, recorded in St. Louis. He played on on that stuff too, like mm. "Let's Have a Natural Ball" and all that stuff. He's on that. Excellent. Yeah. You know, you mentioned transcribing. I've always found that process gives you such a even a more greater understanding and a, and a deeper look at the music when you when you're doing that process. I'm not good at it because I'm not a great reader to begin with, uh, but I've always found when, when you go into a concentration on one person's style like that and really pull all that information out you really get a, a almost a, a magnifying glass look at you oh, know, the, yeah. the thought process behind the notes let's play a little something for the folks yeah yeah sure sure yeah. sure sure a one two three four <laughs>
yeah. great man beautiful man hey well that was great hey man that bass sounds unbelievable thank you so much thank you I mean, yeah that's yeah really, you sound really you sound unbelievable oh thank you yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i had some good teachers too you know <laughs> your, your current boss duke watching him and a couple of lessons and uh just playing a lot like yourself you know you know i just want to talk just briefly about transcribing because you were you were yes. mentioning that you know and you were saying something about you not being a good reader you, i mean i find that transcribing is what I do when I do it is like I'll pick just a little piece, a couple bars, and listen to it, listen to it, listen to it until I can sing it. And once I can sing it, then I'll put it over to the instrument. You know what I mean? Yes. <clears throat> There's a great trumpet player named Clark Terry, who I'm oh, yeah. sure you know, right? <clears throat> and he had a book, and he had a saying called imitate, assimilate, create. So, I mean, and that's what it's all about, you know what I mean? And that's, music has always been a verbal language where we pass it on to each other. And now there's all this stuff on YouTube and everything, but I think as artists, it's our responsibility to, to go to those recordings and try to, you know, pull mm. that stuff off. And, uh, you know, even if you don't get it exactly note for note, sometimes you'll stumble upon something that's like, well, that's not what he's playing, but that sounds pretty cool. Sounds I think great. I'll use yeah. that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. It becomes part of your own vocabulary. So That's exactly how it works. And I, you know, going back to, you know, some of the turnarounds that Duke Ellington's band used and things like that, or Count Basie's band, you know, you hear all these notes stacked upon notes, and sometimes it's hard to get in and hear the meat and potatoes of the chord, but through, you know, discovering those turnarounds and grabbing little things from Duke and different people through the years, you start to realize why they work the way they do and you start to understand it and you, yeah. know, you can create, like you say, then you, the create process exactly. comes in after the imitation. And Try the to find your own voice with it, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Do you still have time to practice a lot? I practice all the time. Yeah. I actually practiced for an hour before I came here this morning and, and I'll spend the rest of my day doing it today yep. because I'm working on some things right now that's really challenging and you know with my jazz quartet I mean I gotta with stay those guys yeah. I gotta stay on top of it you know yeah. what I mean so plus you know the repertoire there's there, there it's an endless pool of material so we try to bring in about three to five new tunes every week mm -hmm. um, you know we're using that gig as like a laboratory to try to like you know work on stuff so. And I find in, in, in the business today, to stay busy, uh, you've got to be diverse. You've got to have a deep pool of uh, stylistic things you can draw from. And uh, if you want to get the calls, if you want the gigs, you know, yeah, you've got to be able to do a lot of different things. You know, I mean, when we were growing up, the work was abundant everywhere. You could do anything from a top 40 show band and travel in hotels all across the country. And Did it? Same here. You could do, you know, rock gigs. It was all there. Yeah. It's that abundance is gone. Right. There's still gigs, but now, you know, it's kind of the the top guys are the ones getting the calls and you got to be diverse to get them. I also feel too that the, you know that we have a certain responsibility as artists to ourselves first and foremost, to our peers that we're playing with like you if I'm in a band with you, but most importantly to our audience. Yes. To like show up and be playing at the best level we can be playing at which takes you know work takes maintenance work to yes. do that i mean you show up you got to practice you know it's just you know we we owe it to those people they're the ones that are paying money to come and see us play and uh you know it's a responsibility and it doesn't matter where you're playing it can doesn't be matter. a local restaurant doesn't it can matter. be a theater or a doesn't stadium matter. 
you owe it to the audience you to, try to do bring the it. best job One to people, bring it. One people, a thousand people, doesn't matter. You You'll know. appreciate this. I'll give you the short version. I stopped in for dinner at a restaurant in Connecticut on the way home from visiting family. And there was a group setting up. I had no idea who they were. An older woman coming in to do some singing and a guy on the piano. They started playing and I spun around in my seat. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And it was... Um, Todd Baker on bass, you told Todd me. Todd Baker yeah. was playing bass. Uh, Vinny Pagano, Pagano on yeah. drums yeah. and this great singer and piano player. And I'm like, I wasn't expecting live music tonight. I didn't know that there was going to be music. And here I am in this steakhouse in Connecticut. And suddenly there's a world-class band is playing with every ounce of goodness they could bring. Those guys are serious artists. Was the singer the piano player too or just singing? He usually does both. But on this night they had a gal singing with them. Okay. And she said she'd been singing there for 30 was years. Was the piano player Ken Hewitt? Was I it? think it was. Yeah, yeah, he's a Connecticut He's been guy. there a long yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, 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 he's great. But that's just to point out what you yeah. just said. Bring it, bring it always, but you know? But those guys, those guys are serious, serious artists. I mean, you know. So it's we're, just... we're going to uh, have some information up, folks, uh, where you can find uh, Brad, his website, contact information. I'd like to thank you for being with us today, man. You really played great. And I appreciate thank it. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. And people knowledge. can go to my website if they want to, like, see more about me. It's, it's myname.com. So it's B-R-A-D-H-A-L-L-E-N.com. There it is. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Mike. Always a pleasure. I appreciate it. All thank right. you. Thank we'll you. see you. Folks, thanks for being with us today on Guitar Talk. We'll see you on the next episode. God bless you.